What does it take to go pro in Rocket League? Well, today I got to jump on a call with none other than apparently Jack to talk exactly that. In fact, our call was so good afterwards, I knocked my boom arm down and broke it. So you're in for a good one. Basically in this episode of the Free Play Podcast, Jack and I talked improvement, mentality, going pro, and a ton of other hot topics related to his recent move to NA. But without wasting any time, welcome back. This is episode three of the Free Play Podcast. Boot up Free Play and uh, enjoy the video guys. Also, Luke from the future here, recording this message from our video sponsor without camera, because believe it or not, after I did this podcast, I was literally robbed. Somebody got into my house at like 3 a.m. and took my camera and all that stuff, but still want to get this video out for you guys. Basically, for the returning viewers, I want to let you guys know there are just seven days left of recruitment for season 12 of my private coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. For those of you who don't know, I run Rocket League's largest live coaching program that takes players like you who are ranked plat through champ up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less. And at the time I'm recording this, we've actually sold over 100 of our 125 seats. Once we fill this roster, our next class isn't gonna start again until 2023. So if you wanna grab one of those last 20 or so seats, DM me on Discord with the keyword 22, and we can talk details about coaching. Otherwise, enjoy the video, guys. Today, I'm joined by a player who probably needs no introduction. One of the best individual players in the world, undoubtedly one of the best ones players in the game, but also somebody who has completely uprooted their team, basically moved across the world to come compete. And dude, you're already dominating <laughs> NA. <laughs> Jack, what's up, dude? I'm, I'm so excited. Welcome and thanks for coming on, bro. Nah, thank you for having me. How you doing? Good, good. I got so many questions for you, dude. I've been <laughs> looking forward to this podcast for a while. The timing could not be more perfect. I mean, right. there's too much to talk about. How, how's the move been just so far, getting settled in? Yeah, it's, um, it's been crazy. Obviously, moving you know halfway across the world is, is uh, no, easy, no easy thing to do, um, especially when you have to compete in some of the most important tournaments of your life or of the season, you know, straight away. So it's been crazy, but it's working out. So we're happy. Your, your guys' placements have been unreal. I'm sure, you know, you're a, you're a confident moving over, but right. did you did you expect these kind of results? Of course, you have to be realistic, right? Like, we're like, oh, we're moving, you know, continent. We have to adapt to new players, new teams, and we also have to settle in. And we're picking up a player that's never really played at too high of a level. We're a completely new team. I was like... If we can make the first major, which you have to get top five in the, in the first three tournaments, you have to accumulate points to get your top five, five. If we make the first major, great. But I'm not surprised if we don't, because like I said, we have to settle in. So I was like, let's just improve slowly. And uh, then bang, two top twos in the first two <laughs> tournaments. And I was like, oh, okay, well, we're first in points right now. And we're, already, we're the only team that's qualified for the major already by the second tournament. I was like, what's just happened? That's I'll insane. take it. <laughs> what's it, what's yeah. the energy been like? What have Crown and Nolly been? How have oh, they been man. feeling? This team is amazing. I'll say that. Like, the team environment couldn't be better. And I know that every team says that, but I actually promise with, I'm not lying with this one. It's so good. Like, everyone's just so happy to be here. Um, even our coach. Like, we all just get along so well. Um, we're very, very hard working. Probably the hardest or one of the most hard working teams out there right now. Um, so it's just, it's incredible, yeah. man. I can't. Yeah, I can't stress it enough. Yeah, it's so sick. It's it's well deserved. Well, I mean, something I wanted to say, dude, because I think, I mean, obviously people look at you and and they know they know you're legit. But just getting to know you over the past like two three months as a London major, dude, yeah, I don't think the reason I'm so excited for this this podcast, dude, I don't think people actually realize how many hours you and I'm, I'm oh, yeah. I can't speak for I'm sure you can speak for Nolly crowd but how many hours and how much work you guys actually put in to be yeah. at the level you're at like I, I it's 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 insane dude you, you literally move across the country and I, I see you cl clocking hours you're clocking what are your past two weeks you're clocking like 70 80 hours just training like yeah I mean right now I'm at 94 because we've just had we've had a regional and I've had the last couple of days off where I'm usually well the last few weeks i've been at 120 oh two weeks, which, is, which is 60 hours a week so in reality it's like 60 hours a week is is only well it's, it's eight hours a day but it's it's every day right like that's what it is it's every single day no days off and that's what's hard um most pros don't do that 
Uh, but I think if you, you're a professional, you know, you might as well make the most of it because in 10 years' time, I'm not going to be a pro anymore. Um, I'm going to look back and go, oh, I wish I did more. You know what I mean? Right. It's inevitable. You're always going to do that when you're given a platform to succeed. If I don't take it, I'll regret it. So I'm just working hard and, and making most of it whilst I can. And I love it. It's not hard work because I, I just genuinely love doing what I'm doing. Dude, that, that, that's awesome. I, I definitely want to get into talking about mentality and, and that later because I think you got one mm -hmm. of the best mentals like in the game. A lot of people, like a lot of pros, something I've noticed is, you know, people get in, they'll kind of get settled for a year or two. And then, you know, once yeah. somebody's kind of been around shuffling on some teams here and there, they kind of, uh, I wouldn't say they get lazy, but they get comfortable, right? And yeah, they a get lot, A lot of people reduce hours, but you're just not on that. You're just, uh, <laughs> you just keep pushing. Yeah, it's, um, like I said, you might as well make the most of it. I want to I want to take some time to talk on this podcast because a lot of people see you now, dude. They see how you play now. They look at your mechanics. They look at your game sense. And of course, where you're at now is incredible. But I think a lot of people actually don't understand or have never heard about your kind of rise up and what it was like before. Right. You know, it's it sort of like one night you were you were a top ones player and then yeah. the next you're on dig and you're playing on all these yeah. top teams, right? Did you always know you could like you were gonna go pro? What, what like what? Take me back to like bubble scene, okay. Jack. Like yeah. walk me through what it was like back then. I was always naturally good at games, you know. I just play with my friends, and then I just get better than them. I'm a, I'm a kind of guy that I want to be the best at everything, uh, mm. which means that I can't. I could never play a lot of games at one time. You know, if I played maybe two games maximum at one time, and I'd have to be really good at both of them, or one game maximum. I, I'd want to be the best, and I want to focus on one thing. Um, like having fun for me is being the best. Like that's what makes something mm. fun to me. Um, so I was just grinding ranks, you know, on, on PS4. I was a PS4 player, grinding ranks. Uh, I got very high rated and I was focused on playing tennis and trying to go pro in, in tennis. Um, oh. And I ended up picking up a lot of injuries and I was still like number one on PS4 whilst playing all this tennis, not having as much time to grind the game as anyone else. Number one PS4, um, number like 10 global. And I was, I was picking up injuries, so I quit tennis. And at the same time, I went to a LAN in France. Like, I played, like, a small LAN with two players, uh, one who later became my teammate, Jorius, on Dig. Um, so I played the LAN in, in, in January of 2020 in France, and my dad uh, took me and w loved it. And he was like, let's buy you a PC, and you can take it more seriously. Wow. And I quit tennis. Yeah, I quit tennis two months after I bought or got my first PC and got my first team. Uh, I just basically lockdown hit, COVID hit, and I grinded for I think 125 hours past two weeks consistently for six <laughs> months. And I True. beat that, I beat that about 135 hours in that time. I basically was doing five hours of of tryouts a day for teams and scrims. Um, so I was basically playing more than anyone else because I wanted it more and I knew I had to catch up. Because I was always good at ranked, but I wasn't that good in tournaments or like mm. competitive threes because it's different. So I had to learn. I had to learn very fast. And I went pro in six months from switching to PC. Um, I joined my first team with, called Stormtroopers with Polar and Dead Monster. And then I quickly changed teams after that. About two months after that, I got picked up by Dig with Valent Panda, who's a world champ, and, and Jorius, who, you know, going back two minutes ago, I said I played my <laughs> first LAN with. So. Yeah. Um, teamed with him, and yeah, so I basically with my the bubble grind, I was just grinding more than everyone else, you know, playing genuinely like ten hours a day. It was crazy. You realize like, oh, I'm kind of at the top of the leaderboards, but I'm not putting that much time in. But you still had the mentality the whole time of like, okay, I got to put in more hours, I got to catch up. Um, right. Yeah. Like, how did you manage? Did so? So were you in like online classes then, and you would kind of just like um, tune into the online classes and then and so then dip? I, no, cause, so I I got lucky because. I was the year where I was finishing high school. I was 16 and you finish high school in, in England at 16. And um, uh, obviously COVID hit. So my school or all the schools across England, um, they completely finished in March. So I had com like March to September with no school. Um, so I had six months basically where I didn't have anything to do but play Rocket League. We couldn't go outside because we were in a lockdown. Right. So what else was I going to do? It was a perfect match because my motivation was at an all-time high because I was only just trying to take it seriously. Yeah. So it was it was inevitable, you know. Like I was going to have huge improvements and I was going to go pro. I, I kind of knew it. So you saw it and then you were just head down. 
And your your oh yeah your your dad bought in. He was like, after he saw you play at the land, he was like, all right, we're getting you a PC. Yeah, he he just said, as long as you pay me, uh, pay me back. And um, you know, obviously, I paid him back. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Sure. You're like, I got I got a I got a place now. I got I got to win a tourney so yeah. I can pay this back. <laughs> <laughs> at least <Exactly>. one <laughs> yeah that's awesome bro that's awesome so you're putting in all these hours i bet people would be interested to know what's the breakdown on that look like because i know a lot of people out there um there are a lot of young people coming in and they're they're just like overwhelmed they're like where do i train what do i do this and that where were those hours right. actually going was it a rank grind was it a ones grind yeah so it was a bit of everything i always say you got to do everything you know you want to be a complete player you want to be an all-round player so you you got to learn everything you got to try everything you know some things will work for one player that doesn't for another so you have to try everything to work out what works for you right Mm -hmm. um for me it was a a bit of a mix between a bit of free play not too much just like warming up before you know getting on for the day and then queuing six mans all day and whilst I queue for six months, like whilst I wait for six months queues to, you know, to fill up to get a game, I would queue one v one and two v two in ranked, um, yeah. and that was basically. It. I wouldn't really touch ranked threes too much because I think you've got to play competitive threes. It's different to ranked threes, so six months is where you want to be. Yeah. Um, and then apart from that, that's like my individual grind. And then as a team grind, uh, at least two hours of of scrims a day. Um, but sometimes uh, three hours um, of scrims a day. And obviously when I was trying to find the team, when I was trying to find my first team back in February of, of 2020, I was doing five hours to do to try out with loads of different players and loads of different teams, whereas most players were doing two, you know. So right. my, my philosophy is, right, is that if someone's training two hours a day or if someone's putting two hours a day to find a team, if I put in three times you know the amount of hours i'm gonna t- i'm gonna find a, t- a team that all players that are three times as better right obviously right. it doesn't work exactly like that but you know you get the gist right you get yeah. the idea um so that was my kind of grind uh just a bit of everything mainly six mans and one v one i would recommend that's sick though because i know a lot of people looking in um when they see a player like you like where you're at now right they look at you and they're yeah. like wow this guy's just in- he's just gifted but to for you to actually like walk through like the whole time you're like, no, I, I'm not anything special. If anything, I have to put more time in than the oh, people yeah. around me. I just catch up. Because obviously you've got competition when you try and go pro. Everyone wants to go pro. You know, mm-hmm. you've got a lot of players trying to do it and very few that succeed. And they've been trying for two years. I was like, they've got two years of experience. When they go into tournaments, into you know, qualifying tournaments, that final round to go pro or to get into RCS, they're going to be like, I've been here three times. And I'm like, I need to catch up to feel like I've been there 10 times, even if I haven't, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, dude, it worked. <laughs> it, right. it definitely worked. And so the formula was just, um, you were like, there wasn't any one thing. You're just like, I have to do it all to catch up. And so you hit all, all these right, different yeah. things. You hit six mans. I think six mans is a really interesting thing. So for a lot of people, you know, watching who are, who are more just on the rank grind, could you give a little bit of background on what six mans are and how it all works? Yeah, so six mans is basically six people, it's in the name, and it's 3v3, uh, competitive 3v3, and you get split up, you, you join a Discord server basically, and you get split up into ranks, you've got like rank D, rank C, rank B, rank A, uh, rank X, rank S, and obviously the higher you get, so going from D to S, S is the best, and I think D is the worst, or I think it's down to E now, I don't know. You get split up into ranks, and you grind. And basically, if you win a series, you're 1 and 0. If you lose a series, you're 1 and 1. And each series you win, it, you get MMR. It's like ranked, and there's a leaderboard, and you have to hit a certain MMR threshold to, uh, to get up you know, into the next rank, into the next, you know, group of players. And obviously you can, you'll be able to, you know, infer that the higher ranks you get to, the better the players are. Mm. Uh, so you can, you're constantly competing in competitive threes in random teams, playing with loads of different players, loads of different play styles. And you, you're playing against better players all the time. And you've got yeah. a goal to get to the highest rank. And it's just practice. You know, that's all it is. It's practice. Right. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize. And for context, like all these people, like rank D being the worst, like they're still right. basically all SSLs these days, right? It's almost all SSL right. plus and GC3 plus kind of area. So with the lower ranks, actually not. Yeah, you can go in six months at a lower rank. I think like I think it's like diamond nowadays. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it. 
Yeah. <laughs> now, I know that sounds silly. People people have different things, uh, different opinions. But if anyone's trying to improve, what I recommend doing is grinding ranked until, you, like you said, you're at like an S cell kind of level and then grind six mans. That's mm-hmm. what you want to do. You don't want to go in six mans as a champ one. I genuinely just don't think it's good. Um, you want to yeah. learn how to, you know, solo carry, you know, first. Right, right, right. And that's where, and that's where rank comes in. Exactly yeah. right. And the only reason I, I love you mentioning it is because I don't think people have realized all the levels. Dude, I, I know there are hundreds of SSLs in, in six meds fighting for oh, yeah. like rank B, B plus A. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy nowadays. Like I said, you've got so many players that you're fighting against to go pro. You, you, know, you have to figure it out. Got, you've got to grind more. I mean, I guess... Look at look at back. You've got a little bit of perspective now because you kind of break into the scene. Let's say some sometime late right. 2020. You've been competing against some some of the best of the best for I'd say two years. Knowing what you know now, like if you could go back in time, would you change anything about like the way you trained or your journey apart from starting a year sooner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? Even I don't think I even would start a year sooner. The the, re- the main reason being is that I think that. I played quite high level tennis and it gave me a lot of, you know, attributes that I could carry over in terms of mentality and, and willingness to grind. And as a person as well, it's tennis has made me who I am as, as a person. So I don't know if I'd start sooner, but with the training, I don't, I'm happy with where I'm at as a player. I'm, mm. I'm happy in general in life. I guess the only thing in terms of training is that I would train aerial mechanics sooner. They could have been better even when I was in RCS on my first dig roster uh, with Panda and Yoris. They could have been even even better then. So I only started getting really good at aerial mechanics when I started focusing on it after my first season of RCS. Um, so just before last season. So about a year and a half ago, I started focusing on aerial mechanics quite a lot. And it helped a lot. So I, I guess that because we're going into a more like aerial based meta, you know, we're going into what I call like an execution based meta where the difference between losing and winning a grand finals is not how good you are. It's how, well, I guess it is how good you are. It's not how like high you can play at. It's how consistent you can pull these mechanics off and mm. how consistent you pull these mechanics off is based off how much you practice them. Right. right. So I guess I'd try, I, I would practice the aerial mechanics a lot sooner and get more like mechanical quicker. Uh, but other than that, I'm happy where I'm at. So not too much different. Yeah. Got you. Got you. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, these days, do you notice any like big differences in how like teams are playing, let's say, now versus how they were playing in 2020, 2021? I mean, I, I definitely think aerial play is a big one. Like it's yeah. the, the the mechanic, I mean, the ceiling's just gone. It, it's oh, yeah. I don't know, I don't know how, but it just keeps going up. So, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, the only thing is is that teams are just more consistent with the the stuff that they pull off, I think. Um they mm. obviously go for more flashy stuff. Uh, they demo a lot more. That's that's the one thing I missed out. Because we're going into a, a meta where you every team is able to pull off the highest level of stuff, right? And and every team's doing it consistently. The only thing you can do, or the, one of the or one of the things you can do, is just make sure they're not on the pitch. So yeah. that's why demos are just getting more and more good. Um, the other thing, I guess, would be that teams are getting like faster and and they're getting more like individually skilled. Like you see teams now. All the top teams, they don't really have a weak player on there anymore. Whereas back in the day, in, in 2020, you could still probably replace a player on a top team with another player. Whereas you look at teams like BDS or like G2 last season, those players, are just, they're superstar teams, you know. Yeah. They're, they're, they're made to win. You know, they've got three players that could carry a team and they put them on a team, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, that's the only difference, I think, really. Interesting. Yeah, and that, that that that's the reason why over time you get, you get these start of super teams to form. I think that's right. just natural, right? Because exactly. you know you get people climbing, and they just want to team. Why not team up? Right. Why not play yeah. together? But that's interesting, dude. Yeah, the the demo conversation. Let's talk about <laughs> that that for a minute because this weekend it was fun. Twitter, I don't know. There there's a lot of Crazy. let's just say opinions on it. I mean, he saw what was it? Calm pick up. Yeah. What what was it? Twenty he demos. Picked up Twenty demos in one single game. Now the game, <laughs> he, the, no, see, the best part about this conversation, which I, I thought was quite funny, is that people go, "Oh yeah, but it was a it was a seven it was a seven minute overtime." And I go, "Okay, well that's basically two games of Rocket League, right?" So that's yeah. still ten demos a game on average in two different games. Like that's still crazy. You know what I mean? So it's like right. twenty demos in one game, even if it's a seven minute overtime, is absurd. And the yeah. best part about it is that it wasn't affecting his ability to, to like rotate or to mm. still, you know, go for the ball. He's just yeah. that good at it. 
<laughs> well, I was going to say, clearly something worked because uh, everyone right. did all right. Oh, yeah. How was it playing against them? I had quite a good series. I had a high rating, so I, I was putting up a lot of like good stats um, in the lobby. So I wasn't really struggling too much. I wasn't really noticing them demo overly too much. They were just a very, very solid team. But I, I think that they were demoing a lot. It's just that I wasn't noticing it because I'm so focused, right? Yeah. Like I'm, sometimes it's difficult to like get annoyed at these things when you're in the moment. You look back right. and you go, oh, you demoed me here, you demoed me here. But they're a great team. I mean, uh, Beast Mode was was insane, but I think Com was playing insane in that final. Like He was playing so good, and, and Torment always does his job. So yeah. they're a crazy team. Yeah, it's very difficult to beat them. The chemistry is, yeah. is for real. They, they, have, they have that on you guys. They're probably one of the best teams that like um at like the out of game stuff with like planning for a, for a, a oh. game they're very structured in their approach i like them a lot yeah i think they're great dude we had a come on for i think it was the last uh podcast and he was talking about right. how they got literally personal trainers for him they've got them yeah. each on training routines they got like psychologists on the team because i think that's where with, with everybody becoming so individually skilled as you were saying every team is trying to figure out okay what's the little thing that we can change mm -hmm. yeah you gotta get the fine margins that's where the you know psychology comes in kind of thing right but playing it, playing against them, you didn't you didn't feel like you were getting chased at all. What are your thoughts on? I, I'd be interested to know because you play at the high level. What are your thoughts on demoing as a tactic? As like how how important is it to understand the physical side? Yeah, I mean you have to adapt. You know, I'm I'm quite a physical player, or I was at least last season. I'm not so much this season on this team, but last season I was very very physical. Um, you have to learn. You know, no pros are complaining about it. And that's what fans don't realize is that no pros are complaining. And, and you got to look why. Well, it's because we're trying to win, you know. And if, if a strategy is the best strategy that you can take to win a game, then you should be taking it. And if you don't, you're a bad pro. You're just bad. You're bad at you're strategizing, right? So it's fine. You know, the, the fans complaining about it are very, very silly. And the, actually, the fans that are complaining about it probably will never go pro. Because if you have that mentality in the first place, you can't do it because you're not open-minded enough to, to strategize and, and find new things and work out why it's working. And you're also not open-minded enough to realize that, yes, a strategy might be good, but there's going to be a strategy that counts it. So you're not open-minded enough to find that strategy. Yeah. Whereas pros are. Pros are. And that's what separates it. So demo is complete, completely fine. I encourage it. Um, I think it, it makes the game more exciting. Right. Well, I think there's a difference between you kind of see some of the people who stick around, pros especially, who stick around long term versus ones who kind of have a have a short career. The ones who right. are willing to adapt and to take it and say, okay, this is what I got to be able to do. Let me figure out how oh, I'm going to yeah. do it. Those are the ones who stick. And I can tell you have that mentality of like, I'm going right. to I'm going to figure out whatever I need to do. I'm going to learn how to do it. Right. Right. Yeah. You have to. You know, if you want to, if you want to compete at the top, you got to do whatever it takes. So with new stuff coming around, I mean, we're noticing like, I mean, even still, there are all these uh, like kind of like niche like mechanics coming up. You, I think Waiten made a video recently. It was really interesting. I don't know if you saw it with, you know, wall dashes becoming more more meta, um, like landing wave dashes even, and like yeah. th th these flicks that Moxie Moxie's pulling off. That you see in <laughs> yeah, you see in his yeah. games. What, Crazy, yeah. As a pro, like when you see these new things popping up, like. Do you like instantly get in free play and figure out okay how am I gonna wall dash how am I gonna do all just get you do you get like do you try to jump straight on trends or whatever's coming up? It depends, right? It depends. So with the I don't know if you've seen, but there's a player doing pogos where he he gets a flip and he lands on his car where the car like bounces up and he carries on flipping. He like he holds his flip. Basically, stuff like that. It's viable to do in one v one, but in, it depends if it, if you can do it in three v three, right? So that's the only thing that matters. So stuff like that, where it takes too much time and you probably won't be able to set it up in a competitive environment. I, I might try it a little bit, but I, you know, it's not worth my time, right? There's, there's things that are worth more. Now, the stuff like the, the, like the landing wave dash, where you like your car lifts up and you like can wave dash really quick or something, that's worth learning, I think. And, and I, I do want to put a bit of time into it. It also depends where you are in the season, right? You know, if you've got a tournament coming right up, you know, you've got to be smart. You know, there's things that are probably mm. worth, you know, a bit more time to practice rather than learning a thing that you probably could use in one in a hundred situations, right? So it does depend. And you also have players that are going to be more inclined to do, to learn that stuff. So like mechanical players are going to try it out, whereas, you know, the, the solid players won't. Myself, I do like to like keep up on top of the trends and, and try these things out a, a little bit. Yeah.
Got you. So, yeah, so it's all about like whether or not it's viable, and you you, you guys right. kind of pick up pretty quickly how game changing something's gonna be. We usually just have to like look at it once, and of course we get some things wrong. Like I remember everyone saying like, ah, oh, ceiling shots probably never gonna be that useful, or like squishy saves. But like now we see it, you know, twenty times a game. You know, some things we get wrong, but most things we can notice whether it's gonna be worth it or not. Well, there's a lot of stuff moving in the meta right now. I guess we can flash forward a bit because we talked a little bit about like. Your, your come up, what it was like training for you then. Yeah. We kind of foreshadowed it a little bit now, but since you've moved, what's like the, I think a lot of people would be interested to know, like what's the day in the life been? Like getting up to speed, you guys getting the new team like settled. What's yeah. it, like what is it, what does a day look like for you <laughs> right now? It's very, um, very repetitive and I, I do, I love it though. Um, at the moment, I, I really enjoy Rock League. I'm, I'm really enjoying playing this game. So at the moment, I'm literally, Getting up quite early on in the day, probably around half eight, nine, which I guess isn't that early, but like for for a pro for, for a pro, pro gamer, pro. that's, a, that's well, early. <laughs> so so half eight, nine. Um, I walk to the facility and I I get on and I'll usually stream in the in the morning or early afternoon. Um, for about three three hours. Um, I'll scrim for three hours and I'll play ranked for probably another three hours and record a video. Um, and then I obviously eat lunch, you know, at lunchtime and then eat dinner, uh, later on in the day and then head back and sleep. And that is literally, <laughs> that has been my life. I promise you it's been, it's been all rock league. It's been all grinding for the next tournament because we all realize myself, especially I'm like, I have a team here that, that we have a new player that is improving like crazy. We have two teammates. Oh, I have, I have another team that is an amazing player coach. That's amazing. Why don't I just use this like chance and make the most of it? You know, we're at the new season where all the teams are on an empty slate. You know, everyone's on the same on the same level. No, everyone's got zero points at the start of the season. Yeah. You know, let's grind and let's be that team that's working the hardest. Um, because if we do work hard, this could affect my entire career in a positive way. So yeah. I'm like, let's just play, let's just grind, and and we we get second. I'm like, let's not like. In the first region, we get second. I'm like, let's not let loose. You know, let's grind for the second regional. We confirm the major. I'm saying to the team, or we're all saying to each other, like, we really want to win this last regional. We really want to grind and and make sure we do yeah. well in every single tournament. It doesn't matter if we qualify for a major. It doesn't matter if we're destroying everyone. You know, four row. I want to destroy them. You know, even even more. You know, so right. That's what that's what the mentality is. That's why we're grinding so much, and that's what the day in life basically is. It's all it's all revolved around win, winning at the moment, dude. I mean, there's so, there there's so much that we didn't even we haven't even dove into like how you manage producing content as well. But the, oh yeah, dude, I mean, I think people can tell like the hunger for you guys right now is it, it's on a level that I think a lot of teams like didn't d did not expect and you could tell a lot of people like it's dude i i love watching like the the tier list videos or like the prediction videos oh, yeah. because too. like the the amount that like things can change in just like a month or two i mean it's yeah it's in it's insane you know i love it man like i, I love the tier list videos because i i used to uh, i can be a player where you know i'll admit a lot of pros like to admit you know oh my mentality is or a lot of pros try to say that, oh, my mentality is perfect. I don't get affected by whatever people say. You know, I read stuff online and it doesn't affect me whatsoever, but they're lying. You know, yeah, we're all, we're all human. Um, you know, whatever you read online, it affects you. But this season, I genuinely am sorry for swearing. You can believe I don't give a <laughs> genuinely about what people <laughs> say right now. Or like, I, I actually love it when I, I read like tier lists. And I go like, they, they're like, ah, oh, Genji, you know, the first regional they're a fluke, you know, I put them at, uh, <laughs> I, I expect them to go drop out of Swiss, you know, 12th here. I'm like, mate, yeah, that's, that's fair, but I'll just show why it's wrong, you know, and call, <laughs> call it ego. I, I don't care right now. I'm just like, I love, I love people like underestimating yeah. us and, and me in general right now. Yeah. It's so funny to me and, mm -hmm. and I'm fine to have a bad tournament and you get, you get, everyone can laugh and I'll just work harder. Uh, I'll make sure it won't happen again. And that's the, I've just got a kind of a, a new hunger for the game right now. I yeah. actually love it. Love yeah. It. Yeah. Dude, it's, a, and you, you know what? It's all about how you use the energy because people are, are going to say bad stuff and you can't let it get to you. And people are going to say good stuff and you also can't let it get to you. you know? Oh, yeah. It, it goes both ways. Uh, yeah. It's all about how you use it, bro. Absolutely. The one thing I learned last season is that you can't let off. You can't let off. Like, we, mm -hmm. my team last season, we, um, I think we came like third in Europe in the first split, which is very good. Um, I think we did the same in the second split. 
And then we kind of let off in the last split. We did none of us really grinded, and that's just so silly. And you get overtaken like that, like genuinely, you get overtaken mm. so fast. Players just become better than you, more confident. You become less confident. You get worse, and you can't. And I'm never making that mistake again. So, yeah, it, it, you can't just let off. You have to always just stay on that grind. Right. Right. I don't, yeah. I don't. I, I guess a lot of people probably don't understand like how 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 tight it is at the top do oh, you yeah. know do you notice personally because i know a lot of people have different like experience with this but do you notice like when you're on low hours versus high hours a difference in your speed of play and how confident you're playing and and all that right so on low hours i i'm usually i don't know because i'm playing very very well at the moment. i'm playing the best i've ever played so i'm very mechanical at the moment i'm very consistent everything's good i don't really have too many like weaknesses in my game right now but like Mm. usually on high hours i might not pull up as much mechanical stuff but i i'm more consistent yeah. whereas on low hours i might be able to pull off more mechanical things because i'm more creative uh but i'm way way more inconsistent and it's bad i see that my this is where i've become a bit weird my eyes aren't as used to the game when i'm on low hours like i don't recognize things as quick mm. and i i even my depth my depth perception in game is off like I just don't see players as fast and I don't recognize things or patterns as fast. And so I might be more mechanical. I might feel a bit faster, but on high hours, I'm, I'm way more consistent. And right now, because I'm, I'm training effectively, I'm trying, I'm training effectively. I'm doing very well in, in like practicing is that I've got a bit of a combination between what I feel like on low hours and high hours. Like I feel mechanical. I also feel really consistent and I feel like my, decision making and game sense also at the top it's ever like it's ever been for me so mm. right now i'm i feel great but like usually on low hours i'm a bit i'm a bit inconsistent right right so it's kind of the the more of the little things that start to fold like as right, you yeah. as you go like you're still like you can still pull off the same things um you still know what you know but it's it's yeah. it's, it's the quick and that's the stuff that matters more at the high you know it's like you were saying dude it's a game of i, th I forget what you said a game of margin game, game of interest. Margins, yeah 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 you got it's like people like you said two minutes ago that people don't realize how close it is at the top you know they they fans think that anything below top three teams or top five teams is trash and i'm like <laughs> well no there's like five teams that can take your spot and and it's just one game you know you win a game seven or a game five and that's all it is to get you to the next stage and so it's so tight at the top um yeah. it's just that, that extra extra bit of consistency that will get you you know five places above the the other teams yeah, I know a lot. Well, <laughs> fans pick a team. They like their team. They have loyalty. Oh, yeah, and... they hate them. <laughs> they hate everyone. <laughs> That's how it goes. But no, nah, it makes for makes for a good show. Absolutely, yeah. Yo, guys, editing Luke here. I just wanted to jump in super quick to let you know when this video drops, I'm actually dropping a free video training over in my private Discord on how to get to GC with zero mechanics. I've been getting a lot of positive feedback on the Road to SSL series, and so I wanted to put something together for those of you in the Discord. And uh, if you're not there, definitely go check it out. My Discord is actually the largest improvement Discord. It's completely free to join. And of course, you can leave whatever you want. Check it out down below. <laughs> Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the video, guys pivoting over a bit so you basically had you guys have had to change who you play a lot uh, talk about fan debates for a second one of the most common age-old debates you got the naeu debate i would love to know how does it because you're you're one of the only people that can now actually speak on it pretty you know because you you've played both have you know do you actually notice a difference playing eu versus na what is your experience like even in like scrims outside of uh no, outside of just like regionals and, and, and that. Yeah, North America is more mechanical. Um, the players are, I think, slightly... I think they're more individually skilled, to be honest with you. I, I do mm. think North America's better. And, and, and I've not switched opinion. I was saying this last season. I, I, at times I said Europe was better because Europe was better. For most of the season, I said that most of the top European, uh, North American teams are better than the top European teams. Perhaps Europe has the best team, but in general, North America had the high, had the better high teams, right? I think that NA is better right now. I will say that they do give a bit more space, uh, and Europe, but Europe is more scrappy, very in your face, very aggressive. I, I think North America will be better in the in the future than than Europe. That's mm. my that's my take. Yeah, mm. I think that's fair. I think it's real. I think most people would agree. I mean, just the amount of competition that's sprung up over even just now, the past, yeah. it's ridiculous. Well, now that we have like. Obviously, we moved over, 
Um, another European player in, in CRR moved over to Complexity. And Furio, who was a top four team in, at the World Championship like last season, they moved over to North America. So we have three of the top four teams at, at Worlds last season here competing now. You know, it, I, I think it's it's harder here right yeah. now. Yeah, it's almost not even a, a fair comparison. Dude, it'll be cool to see what, what happens, though. Europe could beat NA at the major. Who knows? Because everyone was saying this last season at this time, and then Europe beat them at the first major across all the board. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see for sure. Yeah, so far, I mean, I know we're super early, but just from scrims and just from your experience, like playing so far, do you have any hot takes about uh, players or teams that you think might be underrated right now? Or, I mean, yeah. you don't have to answer this one, but teams that <laughs> might be overrated. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll let you feel that how you want. Who is, who is underrated? Um, let, me, let me think of all the, all the players. I guess version one were definitely underrated people were thinking that they're terrible you know what I, i'm gonna say that i think nrg are underrated and that's that's a hot take is that because everyone's yeah, going oh yeah. they're a finished finished team terrible but they were never finished you know i i don't think they're ever fi they've always been pretty good you know after the first tournament here they got ninth to 12th they just missed out on top eight and the teams that they had to, they lost to to miss out on top eight was us who finished second and furia who finished eighth. And that's like, that's tough teams to, to beat to get mm -hmm. top eight. So they didn't even have that bad of a first tournament. Second tournament, they got top four. At Worlds, they got top eight last season. Yeah. They've not been that bad. Like, genuinely, I don't know what people are saying. <laughs> um, they're still very, very good. Justin's still like crazy, crazy good. Uh, so I think they're my kind of underrated team. I overrated like team or player. <laughs> oh, are you um, going to go for it? I want to see. I I'd love to know. Like, every team that has big content creators or big fan bases are going to be overrated, right? So, mm -hmm. like, well, apart from, like, NRG, clearly, their, their fans hate them for some reason. But, <laughs> like, players like... I will say that players like me, if I'm playing very, very well and people will automatically put me as, like, top one, no one can compete against them, like, that is overrated because you have a big fan base. You know, they're, they're right. more inclined to do that. But right now, I don't think I'm overrated at all. Uh, but I think that... I, to be honest, I think that Optic have, have been overrated this season. Mm. Um, they like they're a great team. We've not played them at all. And they could have like they could be our crypt tonight. Who knows? They could like play really well against us. But, like come on, like fans were putting them as like top four in in North America, and and I was like they're not, and yeah. and they're not they're not going to be um, at least for this 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 split. Um, so we'll we'll see. But right. they're, they're definitely overrated right now for yeah. sure. I think you're onto something there. I think the there there's something like the creator effect. Where like oh, it, yeah. it just totally swings people's perception from the center. Like you know, teams who don't have you know like big name creators, people are usually pretty in the middle about. Right. But you put a creator on a team, and you know you people are either cheering like that they're washed, or people are cheering that they're you know top four every every. Oh play. yeah, yeah yeah. It's it's crazy. I'll use myself as an example on last season with with Dignitas. We were one of the most like loved teams. Like everyone, or a lot of players, or a lot of fans loved us, right? Because um, it had you know me, who's a big content creator. Had Yaris and Scrub. Scrub is a big content creator. Everyone loves Yaris because it's playstyle, and everyone loved the three of us together. Mm. And so every time we did bad, people would go for our heads. Like yeah. we, genuinely, people <laughs> were like, oh my god, this team like could have been so good, could have been the greatest to ever exist, and they are terrible. Never had a good result <laughs> in their life. Terrible. And then when we like when we do a pretty good result, or not even the tournament is still underway. Like we're like we've just got to like the semis and teams like Jesus, like Digger, like have to be number one Europe right now. Like they are insane. I'm like, what is going on? Make up your mind. It's genuinely, it's incredible. Like uh, it was crazy. Yeah, I love it. I think the part of it's like no matter what you say, Twitter's just gonna have a field day. Twitter just loves oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. But we we love them for it, dude. I want to talk about going on during all of this. You obviously get into content and you upload more consistently if not the most consistently than of anybody i know dude how do you even balance like doing like content and streaming with all the time you need to spend it's just it's just insane to me i can barely get two videos out a week <laughs> <laughs> i will say that i don't take like as much credit as people give me because everyone always says this right um is that oh it's it's insane but my content is not as hard to, to do as yours is, right? Or a lot of content creators in the scene, you know, 
people watch me for my gameplay. So I, all I have to do is play ranked. So I play three games of ranked and I hand it over to an editor. I, I you know, think of a thumbnail design and I tell my thumbnail ad, uh, designer to, to do what I want and he does it. And that's all I have to do, right? And and mm. pros like are like, oh, it's so much effort, but it's just not like unless you're like really lazy, mm. you know, you just have to stick to a schedule. That's what it is. And and I don't do it great at the moment because I'm so focused on doing well in, in my pro career is that sometimes I'm slacking with YouTube right now. I do need to get back on that grind. But I've been streaming a lot more and yeah. just playing the game a lot more in general. What gets me the best, right, is that when I start doing bad in tournaments, fans will go, oh, Jack's so focused on content. I'm like, guys, it literally takes like an hour out of my day. Like, <laughs> do, you, do you realize I have like, what, like 16 other hours that I'm not asleep for that I can that I can work on, you know, stuff. It's just, it's not content that is making me perform bad it's just i'm falling bad right now like that's, that's all it is so yeah that's why i say sometimes it's not as much work as people think right right but right. it is hard don't get me wrong it is hard i i've covered a lot of what i want to cover i guess the only last thing that i think would be interesting to talk about is your your perspective now on like improving at the game and getting better and kind of where rocket league has moved over the last couple of years because i know we recently started having you work with some of the guys um doing yeah. coaching and I like some of your takes on improvement the most because you kind of just say it how it is and right. you just speak from your experience about getting better. I guess for people watching and they're around like Diamond, Champ, Grand Champ, and they want to improve, realistically, like what are your thoughts on yeah. getting better these days? If you could go back, let's say, like what would you do if you like got reset? You have no max, you're Diamond, you're Plat. Right. The first thing you've got to do, right, is that uh, you have to, if you really want to take it seriously, right, you have to give it your all. And that doesn't just mean playing the game. Like I would... You know, I would play the game, and then when I'm like eating food, I would I would watch Squishy play the game. You know, and and you have to kind of be like that. You have to be watching pros. You like, what are they doing? Oh, that looks cool. Like, I'm gonna try that in free play. You know, and that's what a lot of pros did. And you don't like you don't necessarily look up you know tutorial videos on how to do it. You might look it up once, but you try it yourself and you try and figure out yourself. And you have to have fun. That is the biggest thing. Find what like find what is fun for you. And do that because you improve 10 times quicker at something when you're enjoying it. You'll be more creative. You're, you're open-minded more uh, and stuff like that. So that's my two like mentality tips. In terms of the actual game, if you want like an, a split, because people always ask me, like, oh, how much free play should I play? How much ones? How much twos? You know, I would say if you're at those ranks that we just talked about, diamond, champ, you know, low level grand champ kind of, kind of levels, I would say if you have uh, two hours to play the game, I'd warm up for... Uh, 10% of that, you know, in free play. So that's what, that's like 10, 10, 12 minutes in free play. I would do 2v2 games for about 60% to 70%. And then I would do ones for the rest. Mm. You want to play a lot of ones. And people will go, Jack, like, oh, you you say you always play ones. Like, why are you not playing ones for 70%? Well, yeah, ones is important, but you can get bad habits if it's all you play. Mm. Ones is very important as long as you, like, don't play all of it all the time. You can, and now listen, you can have uh, two weeks where you play majority of the games as ones. That will work, but don't have two years of doing that. That's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. Right? Okay. I want. I want to dig into that because there, there are a lot, like a lot of levels of that. So first off, we'll cover the 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 obvious one. You play now for three v three, but you recommend for improvement to not stray as much toward three v three. Why is that? Oh, don't don't touch it. Don't touch it. I, I genuinely don't touch it until you're like. Like until you're like a good grand champ level, I I genuinely think that's good advice because one v one two two you touch the ball more, so you get more practice with the mechanics, right? In one v one you're touching the ball a lot more, you know, than in threes. In threes, half the time you're just watching your teammates, you're rotating around your teammates, you get beat to a ball because you're just trying to force it over you, so you're not really touching the ball. Three three is more strategy, right? Where mm. you know one v one two two is pure mechanics, you know. So you've got to practice those things that are going to improve you most. You're going to, you're going to be touching the ball more. You're going to be getting more consistent touches uh, or gotcha. consistent repetitions and touches. So yeah. that's the main thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. So for you, it's more like get time on the ball. We need to get you like good at like figuring out how to be mechanical, how to control possession, right. get these beats in ones and twos. And then once you have those mechanics and you understand the fundamentals, okay, then you layer in strategy kind of once you get what, like GC2, GC3, more, more in that area. But at yeah. the start, it's like, let's just get you on the ball as much as possible. Yeah. And that's twos and ones. Yeah. So, and, and the, yeah, exactly. And the other thing, right, is that something that not a lot of players will want to hear because it will upset a lot of, a lot of players that are in a certain category of type of player. 
uh, watch him. But you can break out of it. Basically, don't train to be a player that that is playing around your teammates. Train to be the the carry player. Like mm. that is what you want to be practicing. Train to be the carry player. And and I know a lot of people go, oh, Jack, like. What do you recommend for a player like me? You know, I, I, I'm not the most mechanical and I just try and play around my teammates and I'm a more smart player. The biggest thing I recommend is never, ever say those words again and, and just put yourself in the mind of I'm a carry style player and work on that and work on your mechanics. If you get to a pro level somehow, like by being like a, a standard non-carry style player, if you somehow get pro, because um, the chances are less, um, yeah. I would say that, you will be there for a short amount of time. And if you somehow break out of that and you're there for a long time, you'll just be constantly getting replaced on teams. You'll join a team and you'll go, oh, he's next out because he's just the, the player that's molding you know, into his teammates. They can get a better player. And then he'll be out. And then you'll be out again. You'll, you'll never be at the top. You'll never ever be at the top. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because I think a lot of people, well, they just have like a very static view on it. Right. They're like, oh, I am X type am of player. This. Yeah. When in reality, you're like, no, you need to be whatever your team needs for you to win. Like, <laughs> you need to. Right. Yeah. You have to. Exactly. And that's what a carry style player is. It doesn't mean that you have to, like, you have to carry every game. Like, perhaps I'm using the wrong term, but like an all around player, you, you can do whatever. You know, if your team needs you to be mm. defensive, you, can, you have the capabilities to go defensive. You're not locking yourself into one position. Players go, ah, oh, um, what do you recommend for me? I'm a defensive player. I, I like to be third man. Ooh, stop like yeah. to be first second and third like to be doing this like to be doing that you know whatever your team tries to make you do you can do it the best out of anyone on that on the pitch you know right. that's what you want to be doing that's right. what you want to be training to be yeah and because that dude and that's and that's where the meta is going like teams don't need like i i think um they don't, yeah. there's an idea i talk I, I talk a lot to players about it's like this like idea of like the rock play style versus like the playmaker play style and it's like right you can get to like like fair play you can probably get through the middle and like lower ranks faster if you're just like always playing defensive, always backing right. up, you know, your teammates. But what gets you through diamond and champ is not going to get you through GC two. Like I guarantee you right. when you get, when you get to mid to high GC, if you can't like convert one-on-ones consistently, like every time Absolutely. you got a one-on-one, you have to convert that. Or like yeah. if you can't save one-on-ones every time you're not ranking up. Like Absolutely. you can only get yeah. so far with the safe play style. Yeah. You have to, you have to aim to be the best player on the pitch. Yeah, you have to be. You have to aim to be the MVP. Like, else you, you're not going to rank up, and 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 then you start. You then you get to a pro level, and then you find your team that you want to be with for a couple of years, and then you can start molding yourself into. Oh, on this team, I'm going to play this way, and I'm going to be the main player playing around my teammates. That's fine. Just mm. make sure you're still at a high individual skill level, else you're going to be replaced. You know, make sure that right. you can go on to a next team and still be that carry player. You know, and it's the same with ranked. It's the exact same. Just because I'm talking about pro, you know, pro play in ranked, you switch teams more often. You know, you play five minutes with one teammate, you go into the next game you're with a different teammate. You're playing five minutes with another teammate, and and one game you might have to be defensive. The next game you might have to be more attacking. You know, next game you might have to be in the bit of a middle ground, and that's why ranked solo queue is so much better than than duo queue. You know, I remember say yeah. you remember me saying that it's because you play with more play styles. So you do more, you work on yourself more in, di in certain different in different areas, right? But if you're playing with the same player all the time, you, you know, one's going to be more aggressive and one's going to be more defensive. And they're going to get really good at being aggressive. And they're going to get really be going to get really good at being defensive with that player. And they're not going to be able to switch roles. So then when they go into solo queue, they're just going to be worse. You have a very long term like vision on improvement, whereas a lot of people right. think about improvement as how do I go from diamond two to diamond three? And, right, you're, and, yeah. and you're like, no, like how, how do you go from diamond two to like champ three? And then GC, three, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a different perspective. Cause when you think about like longer term, you're like, then you start to think about, oh, there are a lot of things that I probably need to improve that I'm not focused on improving. Cause I'm just trying to like squeeze out, you know, what do I get to the next rank? You know, what do I need to get to the next rank? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a long-term plan, if, especially if you want to be taking the game seriously, right? Which everyone who ranks up, they want to be taking the game seriously in one way or another. You know, it's fine if you don't want to go pro. You know, that, that is that's completely okay. okay if you just want to get the highest rank in the game. But that's still going to take some serious work, right? 100%. Yeah, and these days especially, dude. Twos and, oh, yeah. twos and ones, so SSL ladders. Oh, it's incredible. SSL is so high rated now. It's like, you have to work. <laughs> yeah. 
Dude, I'm just crying. Yeah. I'm just crying over here, putting in like two hours a day trying to trying to get SSL just slow. Are you slow. okay? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it's for for lower rank players, you're like definitely focus more on just individual improvement, learning what you need to learn, kind of be, like become obsessive about things that you need to pick up and things that you can that's, catch that's in other. Point. You have to be other... obsessive, yeah. Look at a player that you like and take things from him, and then look at a different player you like and take things from him. Uh, you know, your your favorite pro players in sports now, your favorite professionals, they took, you know, players from all their favorite professionals, and they're now a product of those. And that's right. why people, players keep getting better and better and better. You know, the next next generation of pro players are probably better because they're just taking things from the last generation. They're molding themselves into multiple different professional players. Yeah. They're going to be grinding ones because they're going to see you playing ones and they're going to start grinding yeah. ones. Then you're going to have to put exactly. up with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In five years, I'm going to be washed and I'm still going to be trying to get rank one in ones. <laughs> I love it. The series never dies. Yeah. Well, well that's yeah. The th and that's the thing, bro. Like, like with, with all that you're doing, like, dude, you're putting in so much effort across so many things right now. Like, whatever you try to do next, like, whether it's content, whether it's whatever it may be, like, you're, you're, you're set up really nicely. And I think that's right. That's one of the good things. Okay, well, one more one more fi final question, just because I know like mm -hmm. p people will probably want to dig more into this. What yeah. is your stance on like? Because some people I know are like, one v one, no way, never touching one v one. Do you yeah. think you can get to like really high levels and completely avoid one v one? Absolutely, yeah, you can. Like I said, what works for one player won't work for another, and I could be wrong. You know, I don't claim to be. You know. All, all seeing and all knowing about about what you know what takes what it takes to be the greatest rugby player in the world. But like I think that ones looking at it from a from an objective standpoint, it is the best because you practice the most in it. Now, do I think that you can get to be the best player in the world without playing ones? Yes, there has been players and there are players that that are the best. Yeah, they might have touched ones a little bit, but not consistently at any point throughout their career. You know, one player that stands out to me is Jay Naps. He's been at the top of of rocker league forever literally forever or not forever pretty much forever and he's never really touched ones and of course and he's been still at the top you can be an amazing player you can be the best player in the world without without touching ones it's just about what the average person needs and i think the average player will improve the most from 1v1 mm, i see what you mean it's sort of like um it's like it's like thinking of it as like the rule not or the exception not the rule something like that right. where it's like you know some people have have done it but it's like, realistically, are you the exception or are you like, because most players these days, and I think we're seeing it more and more with like people coming up now are people who have been super into the ones and, and twos ladders, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So you would say, I mean, there's a trend there maybe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at last season, Seiku on BDS, a world champion in his first ever season playing RCS world champion. He, the way he got picked up by team endpoint at the start of the season was the players on Team Endpoint looked at the ranked 2v2 leaderboard and went, oh, he's high rated. I've never really heard of him. Let's look at some of his replays. And went, oh, wow, he, he looks a bit different from every other player. Like, let's try him out. And he wasn't good at the start because he had to learn 3v3 and then he just became the best player in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and and it was just like like that. So <laughs> ranked twos and, and ones, you know, pl players are coming up into a pro level nowadays from those from those playlists. You know, it's becoming more and more of a trend. You were seeing it once, well, we were seeing it every season. Their top player is coming from these leaderboards, you know. I look at across all regions, I look at Middle East. Um a player called Nupo, he, he just got banned from playing RCS actually because he played on someone else's account, unfortunately. But he's looking to be one of the best players in the world and one of the strangest looking players in the world because of how fluid he is on the pitch and how consistent he is. And yeah. he was gonna probably going to take over Middle East, in my opinion, and, until he got banned. And he all he did was play like 150 hours past two weeks of twos. I'm not even kidding. This guy was a hard grinder or still is. And he's like, rank, wow. he was ranked one twos for ages, still up there. Um, and he's just insane, just from playing twos and ones, and now he's playing ones. Now he's one of the best ones players in the world. Like, I don't, I don't see him touch rank threes, but maybe that's because I'm not playing rank threes or I'm not checking it. But I don't right. think he touched rank threes that much. So you're seeing a consistent trend in twos and ones. So play it. A hundred percent, dude. There's so there's so many topics I want to go into, but I think that's a good point to uh to call it takeaways. Hit the, hit the ones and twos if you can. Yeah. Keep rotating back posts, but also learn how to. Yeah. Uh, score 1v1 situations absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah 
And, Frank and, and, out. Make yourself a more all-around player. And any anything uh, inspirational you have to say other than that? Did I miss anything? What else did I miss? I mean, we had a million. Um, inspirational. Make sure you, like I said at the start, like you gotta have fun with the game. Yeah. You know, for multiple reasons. If you want to improve, you gotta have fun. And if you want to be sane, you want to have you, you need to have fun. So make sure you you're staying healthy and, and not you know putting Facts. crazy amount of hours into the game without having fun. Else, you you won't even improve in the first place. Facts. Facts, bro. Jack, dude, thanks again. So thanks again for coming out. I, I'd love to. I'd love to hit you up again, but you're busy right now. You got to get back to it, dude. We got a. Yeah. We got a week till your next uh, playing, so I, I can't wait to see right. it. Right. Yeah, me too. Thanks <laughs> for having me. I appreciate, it, man.